uh, we'll make this in introduction round. Jerusa already told some things about her. Maybe we make this uh, uh, icebreaker uh, round in order to get know a bit more about ourselves. So I will be the last one because so I, I already start start the presentation. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Sarah and I'm studying industrial engineering in Karlsruhe. Yes, and <laughs> my name is Volker. I'm the father of uh, Sarah and I'm a consultant and a specialist in lean management. Oh, fine. Fine. So, Jerusa, did you hear about Jerusa already? She made a, this interaction already. So Ulysses, uh, I think Ulysses is attending, is attending his meeting. So I will try to start the share screen of here. Let me see if this is works. So can you see my screen? Yes. So, okay, um, so first of all, uh, thank you all, all of you guys that you're here for this today's session of Agile Praxis, where we will be speaking about the masters of agility. And uh, also, even if he's not here, I wanted to uh, make a special thanks also for Mike Beadle, because he, he had all these ideas about these call for greatness and enterprise scrum, and actually he was the connection that I, a new get to know Pierre and also a very special thanks for uh, for Pierre that uh, yeah you for all your courage and your energy in pushing all these beautiful things about uh, around agility and uh, we see it also that your home is always open for for interested people and that you're organizing uh, all of this so some, some words about me. My name is uh, Jihangir Deniz Ozdemir. Uh, I'm a German, uh, German Turkish citizen. Nowadays, I'm living in some, uh, working in Sao Paulo. And yeah, I'm in this agile journey, something like uh, 10 or 10, 11 years. Um, it started with, um, in, in Germany, where I, I was uh, contracted by a company uh, to work as a like a product manager, but then uh, some some weeks later, the owner of the company uh, sent uh, was has had this idea that he wanted to do everything with Scrum, and I went together with him to this Scrum master class, and then we reorganized the whole company with teams with these uh, roles and responsibilities, and it was a very cool thing. And later on, I um, I worked as a consultant, uh, agile consultant uh, at Kegon. Uh, I think Pierre knows some, some of these guys. I, 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 I saw, for example, Herbert make, chatting with, with Pierre, I don't know. Um, so we made, for example, interest, very interesting things with, uh, for example, um, one of the first uh, safe uh, uh, projects with a big big bank uh, in the north of Germany and this was also very very cool to um, get more more knowledge about all this and then at some time my my wife told me that she don't didn't want to live in um, in Germany anymore so we went back to to Brazil and then I started to work with Walmart walmart.com as an agile coach and it was also a really good uh, school, right? Because we had something like uh, 48 uh, teams with um, everything uh, going on. And I was, I was the agile coach in order to uh, form some, some type of way of work, a framework for all of this. And then later on also in some other companies as an agile coach. And now, nowadays, I'm working uh, with, together with Livello as an Agile coach. It's the biggest loyalty, um, loyalty program in, in Brazil. And we are doing many, many cool stuff here. And we will be talking uh, of some of these things, uh, what we are doing in, in the practice today. So um, 
what, why I am doing all this? What is the inspiration or my pains in order to uh, format, uh, make, make some uh, presentation like this and uh, trying to get resonance to the people because um, it, the, the reality is like the, uh, a bit of sad, you know, when you, when you, when you um, talk about all these agility things and work, work with people and then you see the reality, it seems like a fiction, you know. There are many, many dysfunctions going on. I'm, I have been writing about all this since 2015 in a blog. It's called Agile Fiction. If you want later, you can go inside. So uh, actually a bit sad, the reality. So I, 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 want, to, I make, want to make a call for values and purpose you know, for the people. And then uh, in, in this sense, I wanted to share with you this book. Maybe you, already, you have already read this. It's called, it's from David Breyer, Bullshit Jobs. Um, so in this book, he's talking about, um, um, he said, he's uh, uh, referring for, of Keynes in he who, who told in 1930, uh, make this prediction that the technological advances that we will, we will be passing since 1930, uh, nowadays will lead to a, um, um, uh, such advances that we, that the people should have like a 15 week uh, work hour week so but uh, when we when we look around yeah uh, we, i i feel that or i see it that the people who are more busy and busy even i was searching in the internet and people were talking like yes yeah, some of the guys could for ex are surfing on this wave we can work less and be this, uh, have have like the same productivity or so but uh, but what I see in, in, in reality is more and more busy people. I, uh, I knew, for example, people have, who had burnout, who um, had to be some type of uh, also medicated or something because of, of all this distress and also like this, this depression going on. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's just for us to, to, to think about it. And then he goes on in this book and he says, that in some cases or many cases, it seems like almost the uh, uh, antique Soviet Union, this feudal management spirit going on today, today in, the, in the companies where we, the people love hierarchies and subordinates and love this micromanagement going on. So what does this, what does this say for our belief systems today? Yeah? Do, we, do, we, do we believe that the, the, that the productivity will come with, together with this stressful environment where the people are micromanaged and there is this bureaucracy going on. Also, in order to uh, reflect, reflect about it. And then there was made a research based on the paper from, from this David Breyer. Um, it, the research was made in 2015 in the uh, United Kingdom. And they found out that almost uh, more than one third of the, the people, they, they didn't see any purpose of what they were doing actually at, the, at their jobs. So they said that uh, they hit, didn't have a contribution to a better world or something, or to make re the real cha uh, good changes going on. So the, my question is, uh, do we have some type of uh, bug in our values, in our value system? So what do we, do we, do we think that we have to work to buy the things? It's something like, um, so I will suffer of this micromanagement of the stressful environment, but uh, with, it's okay. It's a vir virtual thing because so I will be able to buy, for example, an iPhone at the end of the month. So what, what is, what is going on here? Is this some type of bug inside of values? And then also in, in the, also in this sense, we have, for example, this tech talk at Google from, uh, um, from Ken, Ken Schwabe in 2006, where he says that Scrum, uh, Scrum also works with idiots. And he says, this is good because, but they, they will know that they are idiots, you know? And then there's all this, this discussion about what is doing Scrum or doing Agile or being Scrum or being Agile, you know? So in this, in this sense, Many, many dysfunctions and bad things are, are going on. So this, this is like my pain point and my inspiration to go a bit deeper in this uh, research for the, the real patterns. Maybe we have lost, lost them through, through time, right? 
Um, so let's see here. And then um, also, yeah, why I'm doing this also is um, actually that now I am really encouraged to do, to do this because for example, in the agile praxis, right? More and more diverse ideas and concepts are rising. And Ulysses, to the bank. Yeah, I think he he he. Um, Ulysses, make. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to say something? No, I'm muted. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm seeing, for example, let's, let's see agile praxis. More and more that these diverse ideas coming up and these, these different concepts, innov innovative concepts, and also resonating in the people. For example, uh, you can see, I, I think in, in YouTube or Ask Pierre later, we were talking about this deep democracy game together with Virginia. And we were making these this constellations where we, we saw how, how the group is, is feeling about, about some topic and we get these different roles going on. And um, also Pierre, for example, if you go into the uh, meetup page of uh, Agile Praxis, you will see, for example, Pierre talking about Aristoteles, about these two method and praxis, about these philosophical questions also. And I even saw some uh, uh, other Agile Praxis sessions where the people were interested in Agile in sexuality or something. And this is very good. Many, many ideas are new ideas and this disruption also going on and finding this resonance. So I'm feeling encouraged. And, and in the sense of, like Socrates said, and I say it for me, I, Dennis, I know that I know nothing or very, very less. So I cannot assume, oh yeah, you have done all these practical things now uh, in many, many companies and many, many teams. No, but I know that I cannot, I cannot assume that I already understand this whole idea and all this, what is included in the spirit of what we call Agile. So I want to learn more with this also from you guys. And making the link also with these, uh, with the book Bullshit Jobs. So uh, what, what if, when we, when we see in the, in the reality, what if people don't know even their own company values? And I see it in, in reality and ask yourselves, or maybe they know them, but, um, or, but they don't use, use these company values. Yeah. Um, but how can we ask these people to use the scrum and agile values yeah? that they understand and work with these, with these values, what comes together. And what if there are, there is a, a, a general conflict about all these values. The company values are in conflict with these agile values. What if this is the case? So I just wanted to open uh, these, um, these um, agile praxis, also making, making a uh, empirical game together with you. So I, I posted this Trello link uh, inside of the um, chat, of the Zoom chat. And then if you, if you could please enter there and just say, what does respect mean for you? This respect, for example, is the one value uh, in, the, in, the, in Scrum, yeah? respect, respect people. But I just wanted to empirically that we have one, one basis of what it, means, what it means for our group now, right here. So Jerusa and also uh, Pierre and, and, and company, please, could you enter in this in this link that I posted? And yes, I will ask I will ask a question, uh, Shangir, to the audience, uh, and we will fill it. All right. Yeah, this is a uh, respect. We hear it a lot, right? Respect for people, and then later I will tell you another story about about what what I was seeing um, about about this respect. But um, yeah. Respect is uh, very important, right? But maybe, um, yeah, we will see it maybe later. Also, that we don't maybe think uh, sufficient about about all these these concepts. Let's see here. Acceptance of the other, yeah, 
valuation of that person, yes, acknowledgement of and embracing its uniqueness. Yeah, that's a really, really fine, uh, fine definition. Jerusa, um, uh, have could you could you enter the the Trello board and also there is not not something wrong or or right. Okay, so I I couldn't get to the Trello. Okay, but just okay. tell us so I I will. Ah, okay. Put it here. Uh, I think. Uh, Respect means that you have to try to understand the situation and the and the others, and and try also to understand the limits uh, between what you want and what you want to do and what uh, the situation and the others are and want to do. Okay. Okay. Fine. So that that's the empirical basis that we will have today, right? Because Ulysses is the, in the, in the meeting. But it's uh, it's okay. Do we have some some more inputs from from Germany? Can you can you repeat that? We are we are chatting here. Yeah. Do you have some more inputs for the respect game from Germany? I will ask the crowd. Very fine. Acceptance of the other, valuation of that person, acknowledgement and embracing its uniqueness. Yeah. And in this sense also, Jerusa, try to understand the situation of the others and try also to understand the limits between what you want and also what the others want and then make this 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 balance between it so fine and you you can think and and also write another explanation but i will may share a story with you uh, there was this guy um who who was very interested also in this question, what does this respect mean? Ah, listen here and welcome. Yes, it's, it's very, very cool, very fine. So the story is like this. This guy went out to, to all these companies uh, who had in their code of contact, conduct written uh, respect for people. And then he was asking these companies, what does this mean in the praxis for you guys, respect for people? So there were companies who say like, Oh yeah, <clears throat> we we have built an, a whole new new um, facilities for for the people, a, a environment where we can um, where we have these beautiful furnitures and beautiful chairs and uh, this very very cool environment, and also uh, other other companies told like. Oh yeah, we're we're giving giving uh, twice a day some fruits and some some food for the, for the for our collaborators in the company, and um, also other companies said, oh yeah, we we give some slack time for the people um, in order to respect them. And then he also went to the Toyota. Yeah, you know you know this 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 famous company, and I think the lean expert will will, will know it maybe the story. And then they asked at the Toyota, what does it mean, respect for people? Because Toyota also has it in the code of conduct. And Toyota said, yo, um, respect for, for people means that we, uh, we empower people, we trust people, empower people to solve the complex problems of the, of the company. So um, you see that there, there is some type of different and, and distortion. Um, inside of of what some companies believe with respect and and others uh, what others believe so let's go on and we will we will uh, take also these findings later on in the uh, in this agile practice to to reflect about it so let's see here so let's let's go and uh, in this search in this search about these um, values and, and virtues, let, let's see the very old human uh, uh, patterns, yeah? 
Uh, and there was this, this woman who is called Pat Singer. Um, she made a story, she made a study and launched this study in 2015. And there is, she made a TED talk about it. Um, where the study, they were studying the patterns of geometrical cave symbols all over Europe, Asia, and Australia, which, is, uh, which are from 30 to 40,000 before Christ. So, but uh, they didn't just find these, these symbols, uh, they found these symbols repeatedly over the whole, whole sites. So, and then Petzinger says that this, this, this was the most important invention of the humanity, or it's the, she's called it the graphic communication. And it was, uh, it featured or it allowed to people to preserve and transmit a message from a, uh, beyond a single moment in time. So when Pierre is talking, for example, about um, that in this Agile praxis, we are focusing on the, on the doing and the praxis dimension of what Aristotle is called the tool, the praxis and uh, the tool, the method and the praxis. So, but the doing is going on in the, uh, in the realm of the present. We do and we're interacting in the present, but how to transmit this to, to the future? So there was this graphic communication. So, um, and, and also we have, for example, uh, Dave Gray, he's talking in his book, um, The Connected Company uh, from 2014. He says that when we're talking about language, protocols, culture and values, we don't like this variability. Like for example, we have in our uh, cross-functional um, uh, teams, right? But we, we search a, a consistency in this. So I just wanted to ask you guys, thinking about this uh, respect game that we did, is it possible that some of these symbols um, represents the, the, the concept of respect? What do you think? So have a look at, at these patterns that were uh, all around since uh, 40,000 before Christ. Uh, so this is not in one cave or two caves, but this is the, these are the uh, patterns that we can find all over Europe, Asia, and Australia. Do you think that these symbols are just like uh, some, somebody went there and without thinking about anything about the, the projection of the future, uh, what what would these guys be be writing with these patterns in these caves? Do you think that one of these symbols probably could uh, represent the the this concept of respect in order to be uh, passed this to the to the future? Look at for example this cordiform, right? The the heart symbol. Uh, this is this is it's going on since forty thousand before before Christ. Or maybe it's this uh, positive hand could be like, hey, guy, I respect you or something like this. So uh, just, just to see this uh, come with these, these um, um, thoughts and ideas and, um, uh, and values, or even, even going on in the like, very, very old, old times of humanity. So the question also is, do, or do, do you have some idea maybe? or some comments about these forms. Look at the hashtag, for example, that we're using today. It's like a, a, a pattern going on 40,000 before Christ. So later on, you will have all these links so you can go inside and, and have more information about it. But yes, I think, yeah, uh, since to, to make it a bit more faster, uh, I think, yes, um, more than only just uh, random writings, uh, these these values and the the, um, the idea of, of of purpose and values also were present maybe inside of the humans since the humans are are on on this earth. So also the other question is: Do you think that it, at this times there was a go horse going on, or there was already these uh, PDCA cycles cycles going on at that times for forty thousand before Christ? So let's let's move on. And then we also, uh, we also um, um, have, for example, the book, The Professional Scrum Master from Stasia Viscargi. And Pierre knows her personally, actually, um, where, where she's talking about the, the tribes. Right in the beginning of the book, she says that uh, there was no go horse going on. 
these tribes, um, they didn't just everybody go and attack the mammoth because if it were so, maybe today we weren't, weren't be, uh, here, standing here today, the humanity. But even they, they had some these uh, limited possibilities of, of, of communication. They didn't have so much details of these communication tools. They, they grunting, gathered and planned, uh, planned, make these plans how it, they, would, they would have hunt, making some type of strategy. They prepared also their tools, the locals, etc. Killed the mammoth, bring br uh, bring it back to the to the guys, dependent guys in the tribe, and then also in the in this fire fireplace at night. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Trial, tribal. Yes, I I love it. I love it. Later, you please send me the, send me this this link, Pierre. So and then they were already also talking about. How will be? How will they get get it better in the next sprint? Like Stasia says. So I ask you guys or our group, do you think there is more than this survival thing going on? Like the um, like it would be a, a, a type of animal or something, just uh, go, just going out in the nature, interacting with the nature, breeding and doing the things, or is this more than the survival? Was, this, was there the spirit of, to change the world inside already? To, for example, to, to idealize this, this agriculture, this construction, health, and in other domains? Was there a search, search for greatness uh, going on already at that time? Was it always, always there? And maybe we lost, lost the link through, through times. So uh, when we talk about search for greatness, we cannot, uh, yeah, then we have, we have the uh, classical Greek, Greek philosophers, right? Uh, who were basically uh, thinking about, about all these, uh, these uh, greatness um, topic, right? And then, um, yeah, and then I have one, one more uh, question to ask for you guys. Maybe you, you just can say it and then I, I, because we are not so much people, um, I can I can make a note here, or Pierre can uh, can put it there. Uh, actually, it is always good for every group that I make something like this to ask also what what problem do you want to resolve with agility? And agility for what for you guys? What what problem do you want to solve? And then we will uh, also use this empirical uh, question later on um, to to think more, more about it and get to some, some other conclusions. So Jerusa, if you don't have the access, um, access to the Trello board, maybe you, you can just say to me and then I will write it down. Okay. So uh, when you were asking, I was thinking that um, I'm actually, I started to learn about Agile this year. And for me, it was uh, really interesting to, to see that the principle, the, the, the principles, I think, principles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they they have to do with a way of seeing things. So it's not so much what uh, for me now is not so so much what you want to to do with agile. More like how do you. Um, get uh, get to see things through a child because i think from my past experience as a project manager that a lot of uh, uh, bad experiences and projects that had a lot of problems was just a way of looking the things if we looked with the the agile mindset Maybe we could uh, we yeah. could find a way to to solve the problems uh, more easily. So I think for now maybe it's because I'm I'm new at this and this is make all the, and this make all all the sense in the world. <laughs> but uh, it seems to me that it has a lot of and and also because I think it's. Uh, he, he opens room for uh, you making the things 
and in a way that is more suited to human beings, <laughs> right? And 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 trying to to uh, prioritize uh, the human relations more than uh, process and frameworks and things like that. So, okay. because I'm I'm also I uh, I I studied as a as a hobby. Uh, a lot of the books and uh, the life of Sander Zuperi from the Little Prince, and mm. he talks a, a lot about hum, human relations. And I think that this way of uh, this agile way of looking at things, um, it's a more human way of doing things. It's a more organic way. So for me, for for now is that I, I know I'm just starting at this, but it's yeah, it's fine. Of, uh, uh, really mm. interesting to see that I, if I mm, known that uh, before, maybe I could do some things better. So okay, that's very fine. Yeah, so improve the way we look at things and solve the problems more easily, and opening room to make things more humanized prioritize the human relations more than process and frameworks. Yes, it's a very good resonance. And then Pierre is uh, talking about increasing speed, rapid feedback, better alignment, unleash creativity of people, engage flocking behavior um, of the crowd towards best user experience, customer experience, SX. What is this SX? Service experience and organizational experience. Yes. Very fine. And then creating a problem solving behavior in the system. Uh, problem solving behavior in the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Create this, this behavior of the system. Yeah. Very fine. So these are typically my buyers because I define everything as a system, as the behavior in the system. So here is yeah. blocking behavior of the crowd. This is what also people can qualify like organic, organic growth. I Means you have to look at the system and you can see how the system is evolving. And, and when you say people relations, and the system in here is a social network. It's a social network, people linked to each other. It's not an organization structure, which is something completely different. And, and, and this is also one of the main differences here. I have uh, Volker, which is a lean coach. And this is good. And this is usually the challenging point when I discuss with lean coaches to explain what agile means is um, the best sentence come from the student explaining complex systems is uh, in all the traditional systems, we are thinking that uh, patterns precedes data. Uh, in Alja is data, data precedes patterns. And this, uh, the thing is before, before agility, we had uh, scientific management. So we have very paternalistic. We, it was very good when you are expecting mass prediction. Mass prediction means you can come with a model and you have to uh, make repetition of that model. And so you have very, very long product life cycles. Then the product life cycle have very shortened because we have to think about mass customization. And this was the 30s and 1950s when the lean and, and Toyota production systems came in because you have to think differently, but with several lines of, of, of work and so you have to change the color of a car whatever and now since the two years 2000 21st century when we all connected with internet uh, a single person cannot have the single knowledge this is what we call complex system it means we are moving to something really related to like a digital platform a multi-channel platform organization means it's like Airbnb you have a structure and you have buyer and seller that come and they work together. You don't need to manage them. You're just giving the rule of the game. So this is the, the, the big changer. This is a big changer. And you have to learn to pass from one project management thing, which is great. I always use project management techniques to limit the work in progress in Agile. But Agile is something you need to learn because it's not easy having the freedom when you're just have the habit to, to listen to the, to the boss. Because now the boss has no longer the whole knowledge. Usually you have that most, you're more an expert than your boss. 
and the boss has to be somebody who is bring everyone together. That's it. Easy agile. Easy agile. Yeah, I like I like it. I love it. So, um, thank you very much for for your input. So, um, talk, think, talking about this greatness, and um, which was Mike, Mike, also Mike talking about this. So we have this a fresco from Raphael. It's made from the 16th century. It's on the Vatican walls. Maybe this is the very famous famous one. So. Um, uh, Raphael just mixed mixed all these guys up, right? Uh, mi mixed it, these guys together because not all of these guys went from from the same time. And then um, we have here, for example, uh, this this fresco is called the School of Athens. And then of course we have the founder of the school, Plato. He's he's uh, pointing to the to the sky, talking about the world of the ideas, right? And then uh, right beside of him, we have Arist Aristotle. He's, uh, he's pointing to the earth, from, to the concretude, yeah, that he has. Um, and then in, in all this, um, uh, there is this uh, also some type of big fight going on until today. And maybe later we can also uh, argue about this, about what is more important, the world of the ideas or more the, the, the doing and the praxis and the, the, the tools. And, and then uh, here we also have the other guys. It said that this guy is the Alexander the Great. Aristotle was, was his master. And also uh, in this school of Athens, uh, uh, women were allowed to enter. Yeah, how, how cool, right? Here is Shantipe, is the wife of Socrates. And also, also here, um, more, more down, we have the more antique philosophers. Uh, the first one, mo I think the most antique is the Pythagoras. And more than all this mathematical stuff, he also invented the, the harmony uh, to the no musical notes that we have it today. And also he was, he was talking about this philosophical daily scrum, yeah, that we were talking about this. And then besides of him, we have, we have this obscure figure He's called uh, he's, he's Heraclitus, and he was talking about all these changes um, and so on. And he's talking a bit like the master Yoda from Star Wars, right? He has this uh, this type of speaking, and then um, yeah, this this guy also I think it's Diogenes. Um, uh, he lived in a um, in, in 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 a um, barrel of uh, like this big uh, wine barrels and then uh, he's he's really he's a really funny guy because he was like uh, walking through the city with the lantern uh, during the day and then the people said to him what are you doing man he said i'm searching for a good good uh, good man <laughs> with this lantern during the day and then also because all these uh, Raphael mixed together all these guys not in the um, not from the same time we also make the freedom also to put Epictetus here he um, he's talking about happiness and making the correlation between happiness and your your valuable actions so he's one of the first ones that I was reading about about these philosophical questions so it's a uh, my, one of my favorite masters of agility and also Mike Peter the maybe yeah the the, the very, I, I love him so much. This is the big master of uh, of these I, all these ideas about uh, this agility uh, things of the twenty first century. And so, uh, let's let's. I I actually hope that somebody would write something like, uh, "What do I? What problem do I want to solve with agility?" Uh, normally, the, all all the guys come with this changes going on in the companies, and we want to be more resilient to the changes normally is something like that so but i just wanted to start with the uh, with the heraclitus right so probably all you guys know these these charts going on in the internet nowadays so we have this ranking of the top 15 best global uh, brands and then this is like very fluctuating and new companies are coming inside the others are just going out and so on and then mike beetle was talking about it he said that all companies in all segments have to in innovate, adapt, and reinvent more efficiently in order to survive in the 21st century. 
So uh, when we see all these changes going on and all these people saying that we are more connected and there's more information, more data and more available and we have to process this, uh, get to the, um, to the um, information. But um, uh, so I just wanted to quote uh, Heraclitus. He said uh, 500 before Christ that, that everything flows, nothing is permanent except the change itself. So the only thing in the equation what is stable is the change itself. That's something some, in the nature of the, of the universe. So why are we still complaining about, about these things? Because we have to accept it, right? So he says, like in the Master Yoda Star Wars way, he says, nobody enters the same river twice because when you, when you do it, you yourself are not the same person, nor the water who is passing the river. Yes, that's right. So changes uh, in, the, in the nature of the universe. We cannot change change, right? So people themselves are complex. Uh, for example, if I had some... Um, uh, argument with my wife at home uh, in the morning I will take this to, to my job so there is all this uh, discussion about if people have maturity so one of I think Jürgen Appello said no maturity ha cheese has maturity not people people are more more complex yeah they they they, they people themselves are uh, complex uh, being and they bring change also into the system right and then, um, so, um, we're actually to suggest that we should accept and uh, change uh, and deal with change. Is that also, we, sorry, is, yes. that, is that also valid for creationism? From, from what? I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. For cre creationists. Creationists. Oh, I don't know. What, what would you say? <laughs> no, uh, I explained this once. I have a, my head of research and development director was uh, a creationist from the U.S. And he asked me, Pierre, do you believe in change or in evolution? Uh, you know me, I'm starting with full passion or something. I had all the crowd laughing that. I said, don't, don't you think there is something else behind this? I, I don't get the point. Then I got to the point. He expected we, are, the change, we don't have to change. It's only God. Yeah, yeah, this is... I, 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 I think, come with a bloody question. Yeah, the, the thing is... Um, <clears throat> um, Don't be afraid, I'm an agnostic. <laughs> no, no, but the thing is there uh, that this is, uh, like you said, to na uh, nowadays and maybe always, all these um, changes were, were going on, maybe uh, in the former times the people uh, we're not so connected so much to, to each other. Maybe they, they experience it a bit, a bit less, this, all these pains around it, right? That you have to be faster. Yeah, but to... one thing, one thing they, uh, Aristotle did a very huge job. He described wisdom. Yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, and for a completely different way, something we, we missed. He said, so you have techne, which is the wisdom of the methodology and the tool. And you have also chaos, which is the, the, the wisdom of what to do at the what moment. And, and, and having the choice, because you need to know the, the methodology and the techniques to know how to deal with that. And it was one of the reasons why Alexander the Great won against the Persians, because he knew uh, how to read the geography, the top, typology, the topology, uh, how to read, how to attack with the wind and everything. He used every, his whole knowledge. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. mostly also where you can see the difference between good and a bad agile coach. The, yes. The yes. bad agile coach won't just have a process and they want to implement the method. And, and, and a good agile coach, he said, tell me your problem, I will find something that can help you. Yeah, experiment, right? Because yes, he did. <clears throat> experiment, tools are, in order to we try and then i think this is a german um german saying um, um that nobody eat it the the wisdom with spoon is it right keiner hat hat this wissen mit löffeln gegessen is it do, do we say something like this in germany yeah uh, so we have to try right? yes here in the room 
you didn't eat your all your soup with the spoon. <laughs> yeah, it could be like this. But uh, actually, yeah. But what what is this all, all this about? Changes changes are here, so we we have to. Be, but something we have to deal. How to deal with this with these changes? And first of all, in order to ask uh, um, respond this question, and we will be talking about Aristoteles. He's giving us tools how how to deal with it. So uh, the question is: So do you think? Uh, so if you would have a guess, what? When all these changes going on, what endures time and change? Do you have an idea? Can you repeat the question, please? Do you, do you have an idea uh, what endures time and change? What is, what is most, more, maybe uh, equal, powerful, or that doesn't get eat by these changes going on? In, in life. All the, all the, world? the life. Life, yes. Like <clears throat> this, this thing going on, right? Of this, this evolution this is uh, timeless. Yeah. Some other ideas. Jerusa, what do you think that? Do you know some some something that you you think that could endure these changes in time? No. Uh, I I I like the answer. Life. <laughs> I was thinking, but I couldn't. Yeah. Think of something. Different. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And life, yes, yes. Actually, actually, it's it's right. So um, we're actually um, it's together, of course, with life. Yeah, we have these these virtues and values, these ideas, these archetypes. What Plato was talking about. Yeah, these these uh, uh, atemporal. I don't know um, this time timeless uh, ideas of of humanity of life. Right. They they don't they don't change. They are stable. So uh, here we have, for example, this comparison uh, between the Plato's virtues. So you can maybe later on you can enter and, and see it. It's uh, um, it was also copy pasted by the by the Catholic Church actually. Uh, and then uh, we have the Scrum values on the right side. It's from yeah something around the. Uh, 90, 90, 95 and so we, we actually when we put this uh, be, uh, one beside the other we can see we can see the resonance between between this even we could maybe think that the even when we, when we compare the both the scrum values are are um, um, not not so substantial than 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 Plato's virtue so maybe you see the um, uh, getting more liquid these these things through time. Yeah, but the the, uh, problem, the idea is is not about uh, the 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 nature of the value is having values. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Of because course. the purpose of a value is to bind a system, a system, a network of people, and how you buy you, you create a culture, you create a community is having celebrations and value. This is from Confucius. Yeah. Yeah. For example, let's let's see the the um, for example re respect, right? We were thinking about this respect. What does respect mean for us? So Scrum says respect uh, respect each other uh, and to be to be capable and independent. But uh, the 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 original the the more more value um, real real value is um, about about yourself. And it, actually, we wrote something about the um it, it was more something about about the others but respect begins with yourself so respect for plato is self-control ab abstention discretion um, moderating yourself and tempering your desire so respect begins yourself in the original value and um also for example um uh, openness, right? To be open about work and challenges around the work. And here it's more the uh, prudence, right? It comes from the word, uh, or it, it, it resonates, it comes also with this interleggere, and it means to choose to appropriate action of a given situation. Maybe openness is like a prerequisite for being prudent. And so actually, in, in general, we have these, these ideas, these, these archetypes that are timeless. And these, these values and virtues are a guidance for our actions 
uh, in order to, like Plato says it, go out of the cave. Yeah, and the cave is uh, like represented the, the illusion of the things. So we have to uh, go, go out of the cave, let go the illusion and work, uh, get to the realm of the reality and work with the reality. So also the values and virtues make that the, um, a, purpose, a purpose of life and work can emerge and we can align, align to it. For example, to be to be a bit a bit more concrete, um, do you guys know what is the Manhattan Project? Pierre knows, I, I guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, do you know in Germany Manhattan Project, this top secret thing uh, going on there? Uh, okay, it was this this project to build the atom bomb, right? We and every we, we cannot talk about. We're not even allowed to talk about. Oh, okay. So I will talk from, from here. And um, so this, th there was this Manhattan project going on. And um, so everything was kept like top secret. There were like many, many teams involved. And maybe this, for example, these teams didn't know what they were building actually, what was the dependency that, for example, the other team would use, what the outcome was from, from this team. And Nobody knew what was the purpose, what was the, the outcome. So it, it was held everything very top secret. So my question is, is it possible, for example, to make this Manhattan project with a, a possible with Scrum, applying Scrum? Yeah, should we? Uh, so maybe the people, should they make this twice work in half of the time? Like like uh, Jeff Sutherland where it was talking about. And um, it can also, it's can we do scrum without this the, the values dimension so one of the first things that we that we want with with the scrum for me at least is to get these these values go, go on so not stick to the to the um to the to the method right yeah, sure like why not um, what do you think that maybe um i think it comes from maybe pierre can help it comes from the french Maybe these people maybe would have sabotage this project. Sabotage is the throwing the, the shoe inside of the. Um, it yeah. comes from the word shoe, right? Uh, yes, sabo sabo is um, the, the the wooden shoe. Yeah, maybe. Do you think that if the people had, for example, openness, if they if they uh, would know about about what they were building and what what yeah. would be the impact maybe would, yes, would yeah. it a little bit different yeah. so so we have to see that actually we have a lot of people uh, scrum teams working in some kind of management projects so when you work in the finance industry you have a lot of things which is top secret and and, and but here is because the team is cross-functional but you don't have dependencies so usually we in in this kind of management project you will have a team or maybe a huge crowd of team just working on that topic and so yeah. in in the system it's transparent they have the sharing the value but the system is very protected you have this huge wall mexico us you know this big wall between the lines so in between the walls it's open outside nothing get out yeah but is this not a bug Actually, what do you think, Pierre, maybe, or the others? Is, should a Scrum team not also long for all this transparency to have, look, what, what, which value do we create? For whom do, do we build these things? And for you, example- You can have 2,000 people, 200 people in the system. That's okay. Yeah, but should they, should they not long for more values? Uh, like, for example, openness? And is openness should, should be limited, like in the case of Scrum? To this openness only inside the team or maybe it should transcend uh, to to the plateau's original value which resonates is the I, think, I think i see here a mismatch between two things you have this transparency a very high level transparency i should show the whole world what i'm doing which is one thing but if i don't show the whole world what i'm doing but in in my universe uh, in the system where I'm building, the organization I'm working, everything is transparent, but nothing is sweating outside of it. So we are doing Scrum, we are respecting the rules, but the whole world doesn't know it. 
that's yeah but is it isn't this uh, isn't this type of uh, work this bullshitty jobs what was they uh, was was uh, this guy talking about the uh, in from from the first book that i presented to you uh, is this without this purpose thing maybe can it can it be some correlation be, uh, yeah, yeah the problem the problem is uh, the level there's some kind of when you're in a business is the business right so it's, it's some a lot of things you're not sharing with the others. So I, I worked with agile team at Daimler. They were quite agile, respecting rules, but they don't give an information outside. In research and development teams, in the research and development world, they're completely open and they're doing all the values, but nothing is sweating outside because there is a huge risk. And I work with SAP, nothing is sweating outside. But internal with the 100,000 people, it's okay. So it's not the problem. And if you go work in a bank, let's see what Aja is it, but you have to be completely open. The bank say, forget it, it's not how we work. Yeah, but why I'm, ca what I'm questioning uh, this, or I just wanted to, this, this reflection going on, if this is, this is even okay for what we really want, uh, with these with these values going on the, the the whole transparency and the whole um ha having this this greater purpose in in all these things that we're we doing inside of this company so i would challenge you just a little bit of openness so open and means with my co-worker with maybe people from my organization maybe with my manager or maybe with the customer we have we have to be open right but yeah. the management project, I have no customer, they have sponsor, which was the military. And the military attending those meetings, or the CIA, whatever, I'll call it at that time, it has another name. They attended a uh, stakeholder, so they have to uh, ask for transparency and openness. But the rest of the world, we know it. So my answer is always, yes, management project can, run, can be run in Asia and in Scrum. Yeah, uh, okay. And what do you what do you guys think? Maybe today, if uh, if there's some team that don't know even nothing, or or this is very limited, uh, we maybe we know that we have this transparency inside of the team, but we don't even know for maybe whom we will we will delivering or we will make our outcome will serve or something. Uh, do you think that will be some? If there will be the real values going on, would be some some problems of would these people be able to perform 100% or give, give all, all their best. Any, yeah. any idea? We maybe we don't have to answer this right now, but, but what I want to do is this call for greatness, that people think about it. What, what does it mean, openness? It's so limited. Can it be? Uh, if with these uh, limited things, uh, we, we, are, we are creating these barriers, these walls from Mexico, and um, have have all these things going on with these bullshitty jobs nowadays. So when we talk about this call for greatness, aren't we talking about going more to the original values uh, and uh, enrich the, the the values that we're finding, for example, here? Yeah. And this is this is this what I what I wanted to um, reflect make go for the reflection of the group. So. Uh, but let, let's go on. And then um, the, another question is that this is, the, this is the world of ideas, right? So now let's go on to, the, to this fight together with Aristoteles uh, about the, land, uh, the world of ideas and the uh, uh, concretude, right? So how can we apply these, these virtues in, in, in praxis? So um, when, when, we, when we come to, to Aristoteles, uh, he, he said that, yeah, okay, Plato, we have this world of ideas, and maybe you're, all, you're right, uh, but these virtues are not downloaded automatically in, inside of the, the brains, like a, a patch or something that you make an update and then you have all these values. He said that you have to, you have to uh, form these virtues by your right actions, virtueful actions. And then he was talking about these uh, practical thing, then um, you he said that all your actions that you do, like your, this doing, 
you have to put in the context of the four causes of the world. I don't know if you know, know this, this concept, uh, but um, even uh, Darwin uh, considered himself to be a, a mere student of, of Aristotle. And uh, one, one moment, please, uh, something. So let's, let's talk about the practical way what Aristotle uh, uh, gives us these four causes of the world. And then I, I was suggested that we could also do this Aristotle canvas, right? Where we can, where we can have these four dimensions, four causes of the world. So uh, for example, in this uh, classical uh, business model canvas, we, we, have, we have also these, these different dimensions. So Aristotle says the first cause of the world is the material cause. So the what? So we have all these ideas, uh, the roadmap with our epics and these requirements and all these things that we want to build. But that's only the, the first dimension. That's the material dimension. So we have to see it in the context of, also of the formal cows. This, this is the, the how dimension. So all these ideas, requirements and so on, how will we offer these things? In which channels? For example, could be an application, could be by an attendance, a telephone attendance, could be a web page and everything. And the other thing, formal dimension is also which APIs and metrics do we want to uh, um, attend together with, with these requirements, road, um, epics and ideas. And also, the, another formal cause is, uh, which, which uh, key activities do we have to do uh, in order to uh, get these things uh, implemented, right? For example, development domain, the marketing domain, the financial domain, and every other uh, strategic um, activities in the team. And then, this, but this is not, this is not uh, sufficient. He says that we also have to see it in the context of the uh, efficient dimension. Like, um, so this is who, who is going to do all these strategic activities and implement this and for whom, for whom are we going to uh, make all these activities, right? So there is the, the team, like all the, with all these collaborators involved uh, in order to build uh, build these, implement these, these ideas, and also for whom, right? Which are these, these customer segments? We, uh, what are the characteristics of the people? And then also, this is not the, the final, so he, the final uh, cause is, the, um, is the, the final, right? This is the why. So the, the, the question of why, why are we doing this? What is the purpose of, of all these activities? in order to implement all these ideas and requirements. Also, what are these strategic objectives to it? So, um, so now uh, Aristotle said that we have, and all our actions has to be in the context of these four causes. And for example, we could, uh, based on this, create these Aristotle, Aristotelical philosophical canvas. And then we see, for example, all these open source, um, uh, all these open source uh, softwares going on. Um, for example, now that they, I, I think yesterday they told that this new Windows will, will have this Linux kernel, right? And when we see all these um, software which are created in, in a greater purpose where people just come and create something, something great and they, they don't even... Um, get some, some money for it and they can, they can organize themselves and build these great softwares uh, which sustain all, all the other um, things going on today, right? So he says that we are not what we do, right? the, the action, but the excellence we will get uh, not in one act, but in our habits. Okay. And then um, when we talk about habits, we have, we have also um, Pythagoras, right? Um, and uh, he, he, was, he was talking about, about these habits and he said that um, with, the, with your, the good habits, with the virtueful habits, you will get to know the nature, nature of the gods. And I don't know if you noticed, but uh, they say that 
um, um, I think it's from Peter Schulz. He says that you have to contract the character and train the abilities, right? Uh, so Pita actually it came from Pythagoras, and um, um, he had these um, like this this test in order to enter to 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 his university, which is said to be one of the first universities of the world. And then um, and actually he um, he rejected one man to. He, this man didn't pass his his uh, exam, and uh, he actually. Um, it is said that this man uh, burned down the university together with him. So it was like a martyr for the knowledge or wis and wisdom. And then he said, uh, basically, Pythagoras in his golden verses says uh, that you have to ask yourself every day and never come to sleep to your eyes until you have examined. Uh, with all, all your actions of the day by your reason, by your ideal, right? Um, and then he, say, he goes on and says, what do you have to examine? What have I done wrong? What have I omitted? And reprove yourself for the wrong and rejoice for the right. So it, some type of, it resonates for me totally with this um, uh, idea of, of these uh, daily... Uh, daily standard. Yes, but this is in a philosophical way, right? So uh, the people ask me, Dennis, what could, what, what can be done? What, what, uh, what can we do in order to make this, this first steps to achieve? Say, make, make the daily. So you get all these uh, things going on. Uh, for example, maybe some things that the people don't don't understand. It will come out in the daily. Maybe things that uh, that we are not not maybe synchronized where we should be come out in the day. So maybe this is the first, first step in order to come, come into this um, value world uh, of full of virtues, right? And have the right actions, the virtueful actions. Have the ideal before of us, could be the sprint goal or an, uh, the purpose or where we want to go, that our vision, and then see, look, did we do something that bring us more closer to this? Or did we do many things that bring us uh, more away from, from our ideal? So this is the philosophical question behind. Maybe we should get uh, a bit more, more to it. And also, uh, Epiteto, I was already t telling about this. He made the link between happiness, the correlation between happiness and the virtueful actions. So um, Epiteto, he has a bit of, of a sad history. He's, he was a Greek, uh, a Greek slave in Rome, and uh, he was a slave from a secretary of, of Nero. And he said that the, the, the guy broke his legs. But even though um, he, would, he was able to, uh, through his, all his philosophy, come, come to a master's um, degree, let's say, and be the uh, consultant of, of, of this, this emperor. So he says that, Happiness is a verb, and this is not a uh, German uh, trying to talk English and he's doing, uh, saying it wrong. Uh, he said actually that happiness is a verb. He said that uh, it, happiness is the continuous, dynamic, and permanent performance of actions with value, valuable actions. Mm -hmm. So he says, our life is constructed in every moment and is useful for us and for all the people who are tang tangentiating. Um, Touch us. So Epiteto is a really, really cool guy. He has also all this manual with many, many other cool stuff. So maybe later you can you can have a look at it. And then comes Mike and makes this call for for greatness. Yeah, and he has this wonderful definition of uh, re, uh, the thing called the resonant agility. And he says we have to co-create together something great. Believe in the purpose. We have to want to do the, all these things what we do. We have to like and respect the people that we do it together. We have to focus on the benefits of people, uh, like customer experience, I didn't, don't see it, user experience, employees experience. And then I think I didn't found it now in, the, in, the, in these last days, but I think there was one, uh, one uh, picture of him telling that uh, people's experience uh, over everything, I, I I think you 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 know this right. Yeah, because uh, I, I have taken that picture. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yes. But uh, maybe you, you can you can send me the link or, or the you can send me the picture. Yeah. And then he says that we have to do all at once for the results and improve, improve always. So if you look at this with all this uh, thing that, that we have seen and all these philosophical questions going on about this more philosophical agility, it totally in totally resonance, these but things. You have to think it's not a bad word here. If you, if you look what is the purpose of philosophy is to try to explain, to give sense to things. And Agile is a sense-making approach. Means, if you're talking about sense-making and purpose, these are all philosophical. Yeah, yeah, highly, highly. And this is one of what, what Jerusa said, that to, to, to uh, have a different view, view of all, all this going on, and maybe to come to solve the problems in a, in a different way together with this thing, what we call agility. So uh, also he has, he's talking about this Demos team. So it, uh, coming the, the tears from, from the eyes, he says that we have, to, we have to create teams who are auto-directed. Everybody knows the purpose. Everybody knows where, the, where, where we want to go, this, this vision. Everybody knows which value do we create. Don't have to be someone inside there and telling all oh, this, this is it, but it, you should be should be like inside inside of the spirit of the group that everybody knows it so it can make this auto management team auto directed team and auto managed also yeah to make this all all these things at at once the business it and ongoing and also take all the decisions who have to be made in inside of the, in the team and then auto organized yeah make this autonomous people make the cross functionality everybody who is needed is there and um, like mike told is the first rule of agile is to cut these dependencies from 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 these people inside of these auto auto sufficient uh, teams and uh, the most imp uh, difficult thing is the auto select uh, selection so um it, due to uh, which domains on of knowledge and mastery we need that this team should be able to to, to push it from the subsumption to inside of the team. But we will, we will see a bit more uh, now. So now, now it's about this practical thing. This is an abstract from, from our experience. For example, this open information system, what Mike is suggesting in the subsumption mode. So you get all these uh, people, these collaborators who are um, interested or who, who are needed uh, to be made part of inside this instance with their uh, special domains and mastery. And then you make this creation of the instance, construct this house, could be represented by the, uh, by the Aristoteles canvas that we saw. And all the actions are inside of, of this canvas, of these people. And then the idea is to deliver value to the clients and users, which we, sh which we call personas. And then what, what is the, now the, the coolest thing is that we now have to get this feedback. Feedback from that could be an in, indirect feedback by metrics and KPIs or direct feedback. Take some, some people from this customer segment, get, get inside of your team, ask these guys, what, what do they think? What, what do they want? What is the experience? of these guys and also the the uh, pierre talked about it mike was talking about it experience of all people involved in, in this so also the collaborators experience is very important so we have to get this feedback also from them and use it in order to adapt and and um, uh, be more resilient to changes adapt our our instance and also um, of course this instance is not totally uh, alone there. There are other instances. The other instances in the company could be a, a classical area or a department which which still is, is in this in this more more um, silo uh, thinking could be another instance like this instance for example this cross cross functional cross domain instance and so on. And then going going a bit further, so Mike was talking about the surfing on the canvas. And when we think about this feedback of these collaborators by the capturing this experience of the collaborators, so we found these uh, this study. 
I think you already all, all read this. It, come, it came in the HBR March, March of 2018, this IBM case. They were, they were finding out the col correlation between the collaborator, collaborator's experience influences in 66, uh, like two thirds of the client's and user ex uh, experience. So uh, Mike was talking about these uh, collaborators experience or employees experience and then came the study that for IBM, in the case of IBM, they could make this, um, this study and find out the correlation that it's impacted two thirds of the, of the client's experience, the experience of the collaborators. So we said, so there must be another canvas there, right? Because we can, we have these canvases going up to the, for example, this instance is a business unit, right? So we, we have also other canvases in the other instances, higher instances, for example, for company, but, uh, and other, uh, other instances also um, like department areas and so on, which are not yet uh, totally uh, adapted. But also we have, we have this um, collaborators instance, right? This, um, where, we, where we have to think about what is, what is these uh, motivators, intrinsic motivators in order to measure this experience from this guy, right? In order to, to, um, to, to augment this, this experience of this guy. So we have, we have seen a lot of things about this. How can we gather, how, how can we structure this instance of the collaborator. So we were reading about Pink, Daniel Pink from his book Drive. I think everybody read this book. Uh, he's, he's talking about that uh, support, when we suppose that nobody in, in, this, um, in these conditions live under a bridge. So money is not like the, the most important thing for these people. What does the, motivate these people? So he, he was all these studies and come to the conclusion that it is this purpose to see, the, to connect yourself with, with your purpose to the purpose of the company, to have more autonomy and my mastery. Um, and then also we, th we saw a resonance also in these Hawthorne experiment. I think you also know this, oh. um, Hawthorne experiment. I don't know. Yeah, this was this, uh, this uh, relatively famous experiment in order to, it, it began to search the impact of light to the productivity of people. Okay. Yeah. But it turned out to be a, a, a experiment about uh, like um, social management uh, experiment, you know, and they, 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 they set, uh, they had very cool findings. And then for example, they found out that in a, in a factory when, when the people were able to change positions, uh, they they would be more motivated. For example, had the autonomy of decide where today I work in this position, tomorrow I work in the other position of this factory. It was yeah. a motivator factor. Because also, at that time, yeah. at that time, through the scientific management, people are not allowed to see each other. So you watch the wall because when you're working on a chain and you were watching the wall, you're not talking. You're just focusing on your work. And then they see, uh, okay, I see the point. So when they remove the place so people can talk with each other, this conversation has to fix uh, problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. And also the, if the people, so there was no rules. So the people themselves could also try out another, um, another um, type of work in order to uh, uh, know more about what, what was going on. It was like, uh, Augmented mastery, so they would learn more more skills. So it also showed that it get more motivated to people and more more productivity. And also the, the people themselves, even they, if they didn't were asked about about that this experiment was about if the productivity would rise or not, they themselves in this in this group they decided to make an objective for them to to make more to be more productive. So they they see more more purpose purpose in it, uh, and then and then later there were these critics. They said, yeah, but but at that time in 1930, um, uh, if you would make an experiment, for example, at that time, the the fact that you participate in the experiment already 
would uh, would give you a boost of uh, of motivation. Yeah, so sure. They, yeah. And there's another quote from Jane McGonigal. Uh, she make research on gamification, and she says people has the proportion on hard work and not on laziness. So yeah. the thing is, it was over controlling. It was a servant, the master and servant relationship before. And then you discover that people, if you bring purpose and you let them go, the, the people are more keen to make hard work than just stepping back. Yes, exactly, exactly. But then they, these critics, they, they, they said, they admitted that, yes, of course, at least there is something like a thing called the Hawthorne effect that for a short time, if, if people uh, feel that uh, somebody is getting respect for them or, um, or um, giving the, the credits to these people to, to make like this experiment in every moment, they, there is this short time during effect for, uh, for some months about the, the aument, uh, rising of, of the productivity. It's a natural effect, so you can later on read it more detailedly. But um, yeah, the thing is, uh, we have to work more up with this uh, feedback um, from, from the collaborators, yeah, to get, to get this experience going, to make them more motivated. So here is um, something that we, that we do out of, out of this experience uh, of the collaborators. So um, every collaborator which makes part in an instance um, makes this um, gives his, his feedback, uh, collaborators' feedback. This, this, we capture the experience of him, and then we can, for example, create, um, uh, make a um, cal calculate the experience of the, of the instance. So this is the uh, instances experience. So uh, with all the collaborators which make part in in this instance. So for example, here we can see that. Um, at this, so we have uh, date, scientific data from all the months, and then, for example, here we can see that we already had the cap, uh, we're capturing the experience of 90, 92 percent of the collaborators in this instance, and then, for example, here um, we we, uh, we started at January uh, like a migration project, so like a very badass big thing, and then. Uh, all, the, all the teams doubled in size. So you, you see that the, the team uh, penetration of the experience goes almost down uh, the um, the, the, to the half. And then you see this ramp up also to, to measure the experience of, of these collaborators. And also you see the impacts in autonomy. Uh, for example, the people, uh, of course, if you have th some such big changes in, in one instance, with the collaborators, the the perception of purpose, autonomy, and mastery goes down. It only to you to guys to see how how is this uh, re reacting, right? These, um, these these measures. So we have, for example, um, some ask for example, what it, what could be part of the purpose domain, right? Uh, happiness, if you uh, know know and agree with the vision. Uh, you can you can you are able to um, produce the the right value. Uh, do 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 you know and uh, agree with the process uh, establish um, uh, the process going on? Are you being able to participate sufficiently from uh, for for the instance or not? Because many people are, for example, participating surfing on many canvases, right? They're participating in different instances at the same time, and uh, and so on, right? And also here, what, what, could we, what could we measure until now? So um, when we, for example, uh, take, take this, uh, these things and for example, the, the worst measures were in the process domain, in the actions, in the time, in the autonomy domain, in the mastery domain. When we focus on these worst results, we could see, for example, that based on these feedbacks, we could, for example, have changes inside of the whole system. For example, we purchased uh, a different type of communication tools because only with Skype and Slack and so on, it was not possible to handle all these problems. So they bought really uh, expensive tools 
for this uh, tele tele uh, presencia thing you know that you have for like um all all these different distributed teams be able to be in the, in this room all, all the time like a uh, room right yeah and then uh, also we we uh, the the facilities where these people were were working were reconstructed in order to have this this less less noise coming from 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 the other instances and also more more workplaces were created also according um, based on these these uh, feedbacks from 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 these guys so uh, trainings were organized from business to process framework every type of training just just came out there and then we could make a they, they had some new ideas about how to integrate better the, the, this, this new people so they created these um, integration buddies and they made some uh, so every month some somebody's uh, they gamify, gamified it about that every month there's a integration uh, integration star the guy who helped, helped the most people and then also of course adjustments in the framework established framework was made in the roles responsibilities artifacts also um, structures were adjusted new uh, new structures were added like new new squads uh, were created or because it was too big so it and the, the the cool thing is that this this type of thing didn't come up fr from the retrospective but it came from the feedback of the collaborators oh, so yeah. yeah and then what we have is actually a boost in the virtues and that's how i'm coming back for the call for more virtues and values say for example um for example we we made some uh, some agreement with the president of the of this company who came for example at least twice twice a month or twice or three times a month in order to um, um, communicate with the people about how what is what is the vision what, um, what are the the, the, the the plans do we have to make a replan uh, re uh, this and also we see that there is less work in parallel, like in transparent things going on. So everybody is like more, uh, uh, every single collaborator, every, every single employee is more uh, in, into it, more connected to, to, to the vision and, and also to the artifacts around this instance. So, and then we can see also there is more participation in the, in the instance, especially from these instances, uh, more classical instances in the, for example, uh, marketing and and uh, these these departments and and areas they 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 try to go uh, create their work more in the instances than than like in the silos so that that characterizes like a, a also courage right they just go where the value is going on where there is a purpose defined and where the where the where the good uh, good party is going on right and then also we have we have measured that there is less anonymous posts in the retrospectives and so it means that also it shows that the people in general have a more courage uh, to, to to stand for for uh, what what is what they want and what is their point of view right and also more active collab more active collaboration of more people so we we have seen that um, there were some type of leaders and they were like pushing everything but nowadays we can see that there is more involvement of of more people in in general that also characterizes our, uh, more more respect and also people go inside of the uh, responsibilities descriptions and for example put away things it, it, it it's more it's more dynamic the people are aware of what is their domain? What is their contribution? And actually, they 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 change it, right? They say, no, no, this is not not with me. But it's it would be better, for example, um, yeah, it, it's in the sense of the the justice. Do what's your own and not from the others, right? To have more commitment in this in this sense. So the uh, the last thing that I wanted to share share with you guys also, what's up next? So. Uh, of course, we are measuring all these all these experiences, 
but we wanted to make a like it can it's it's like it's too too dry all these things right and then we already began together with the inspiration from from for example this this scrum a uh, scrum book I, I i saw it this came out uh, recently and they were talking about the history of the 10 bulls so this is the really um, old history uh, from the um, Bud, Bud, Buddha Zen priest, they say that there, there's a whole journey of, of the human being in order to face what is the, their problem, go after the problem, solve the problem, and be, be more evaluated as, a, as the person, actually. So we wanted to also did resonance with the ideas of Joseph Campbell. He, he was uh, talking about the, the hero's journey. So he, he says that all of this, this myth uh, that we're talking about, Hercules, uh, um, the, all the other myths of humanity, they, 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 he says that they describe one, one single pattern of this hero's journey. So he says, this is actually part of our lives. And so we wanted to create something like this hero's journey uh, for, for all, all these collaborators in order to, that they get, are more connected to the, to the, to the purpose of it and they uh, in, independently because we have also a cultural problem. For example, we, we heard something like the one, we are totally distributed teams. We have something like five to 10, five to seven consul different consultancy companies. Uh, uh, for example, developers, key quality assurance and so on. So, uh, there is some some problems about about these values, for example, of openness and um, be, for example, have the courage to to tell to tell the things. So this was very very good thing to do because the people had the opportunity to um, um, think about what is what is my experience here actually. Um, is a good or bad experience, and what what can I do in order to to, to, to evolve, to be better, for example, in my next cycle, and also what, what maybe could, could the group do, right? And then this is a good way, it's an anonymous way to do it, or everybody can do it by himself, but we have to create like this, this journey, right, from this guy, that they have to know why I am here, what I'm doing here, which, which is my, my domain, so what can what what can be my most valuable contribution of my actions in order to make make this this a uh, great thing happen so thank you guys this is the, a bit from these ideas and also some abstract from the paper that we're writing now and then later we will have all these data uh, scientific data also about these these things yeah. we're doing it like one and a half year all this all this stuff very interesting. So, Thank you so much, Xiangir. Awesome. Good work. And you are you and Rachel are maybe the two guys, only guys I know that are using enterprise scrum patterns. <laughs> um, yes, and that's that's great. That's great. Any questions here in the audience? No. No questions. No questions at all. Okay. Jerusa. Uh, so uh, uh, I have, I think I have to process it it all, <laughs> but I really liked the, the relations with uh, philosophy because I study philosophy, so it's uh, really interesting. And I think uh, later I I have to talk more with Dennis about <laughs> about these ideas because I don't have. Uh, actual experience with the scrum or agile i i uh, manage uh, projects with uh, pmi and this waterfall uh, frameworks so um i think i i need uh, a little bit of real life experience with the scrum to maybe uh, see what I need to understand better to to use these ideas, but I really like it. Yeah, it's a journey, right? It's not not a plugin anyway. So uh, I will propose for the Azure Praxis. The we will be coming in this summer per period. So the next time it will be in July. 
but I will maybe set up some open space. So we make virtual open space. This means you can raise up a question, a topic you want to talk about it. So more uh, like an event where everyone is able to talk and bring a topic on a plate. So these are the next time. And a topic maybe Jerusa is, what the heck is that scrum? Is somebody here in the audience that can explain what it is? Yeah, this would be a good one. Good one? 